Hello and welcome to this video review of Grid for Xbox One, PC and PS4. I've been playing both the finished console versions of the game and you'll see footage from both in this video but primarily the Xbox One X version which you're actually looking at now. If you've been following my channel you'll know that I was very taken with the game at the last preview event a couple of weeks ago going so far as to say that I thought this could be the racing game of the year. While that may still turn out to be true, perhaps by default, I'm afraid that the potential I saw in it hasn't been realised in the final game. Grid's reimagining has somehow seen it succumb to all the problems that other modern racing games have suffered from, which is seeing the genre take great strides backwards and normalising mediocrity. I'm not trying to be dramatic, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So let's look at the game in motion here on Xbox One X and I'm sure you'll agree it looks absolutely beautiful. The 60 frames per second update of the higher tier consoles is gorgeous and the art design is undeniably superb. The cars look amazing, the lighting is brilliant, the draw distance is immense, making this look like basically my dream racing game. But what do you notice that's wrong with this footage? Well this is me actually going at full speed, I'm trying to win the race here. Now after a few races I realised I wasn't smiling, in fact I wasn't actually excited at all. Granted when I first stepped into the Formula 1000 race at the start of the Fernando Alonso branded branch of the career mode, the sensation of speed was very much apparent and it was exhilarating. But overall the game is pretty sedate. From a current gen point of view, the handling, which is based on realism but tweaked for more fun, is comparatively laboured. You can catch slides, certainly, and the grip under braking is a breath of fresh air compared to recent sim races where overshooting corners is a constant problem. But in a lot of the cars, that willingness to slide is completely undermined by the subsequent grip, which makes the engine bog down when you actually get traction back. Many events, especially in the touring cars, feel like a constant battle to keep the revs up, and it's something that the AI drivers don't seem to suffer from. It's not just to do with the traction control either, if you turn it down the problem is still apparent. The power band is just too narrow, restricted to top end torque, which makes the game feel like you're in a go-kart, loving that sensation of sliding, but then disappointed at the cumbersome power delivery when you do regain adhesion. Even so, it is very easy to pick up and play, and I would wager that everyone could get some enjoyment simply from piloting one of these beautiful cars around these gorgeous environments. But that's from a current gen point of view, and considering that this new grid was supposed to be a re-realisation of everything that made the original race driver grid so great on Xbox 360 10 years ago, I loaded up the Xbox 360 version and my goodness what a shock that was. The intro movie alone is a snarling statement of intent. And then the game, well, in my first five minute race, I'd had all my suspicions confirmed. Old Grid is like a wild animal. The handling is responsive and tight, dancing on the very edge of control. The game moves quickly and the racing is very, very exciting. Compare the San Fran Hills in the 360 game here, to the Xbox One X's version of Grid here. By comparison, it's like there's a driving instructor sat in the car next to you. Everything's so polite. The camera doesn't shake when you return to terra firma and the car barely leaves the ground at all. It's so watered down, it's painful. And then there's what happens when you hit a wall. Now I made a whole video recently about the new grid's damage model which showed a beautifully complex and nuanced system. A system that actually has carbon fibre breaking where metal crumples, glass cracks, scratches build up and bits of the car do fall off. But the truth is, the actual implementation of it is completely toothless compared to the original. Hit a wall at speed and race drive a grid on Xbox 360 and you'll rip the corner off your car, wheels bouncing away as the smoke clears. New grid? The wheels never even detach and the crumpling is inferior even to that of Grid Autosport which has just been released on Nintendo Switch. Now I've actually just bought the Switch version myself so I can show it to you here and the damage model is still one of the best I've ever seen. But 
Talking of the Switch version, that just brings me to another disappointing element of New Grid. Grid Autosport on Switch has a performance mode and a quality mode that you can toggle between so you can enjoy either 60 frames per second-ish action or rock solid 30 frames per second with higher fidelity and effects. Now, in my last video, I said that all the versions of New Grid ran at 60 frames. That's because when I spoke to one of the developers at the preview event, he told me that 60 frames per second was very important to the team. And that was why they were making every version of the game run at 60 frames per second. Now, I remember this specifically because he told me he still personally has a launch model of the Xbox One, and he was making sure the game ran at 60 frames per second on his home machine. So that's why I said all the versions ran at 60 frames per second in my preview, I wasn't making things up, I swear. Imagine my surprise then, when I loaded up the game on my standard PS4 and was met with this. 30 frames per second action. A quick email to the PR company confirmed the game runs at 30 frames per second on the standard, that's the base, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and then at 60 frames per second on the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. Having seen how gorgeous the game is at 60 frames per second, coming back to the 30 frames per second PS4 version is simply horrible. Of course, your eyes do get used to it, but the fidelity is one of the few reasons left to play this game over the original, so when it's mostly gone, it's a very hard sell. Indeed, when I first loaded it up on PS4, I hadn't just been playing the 60 frames version, and I did wonder where the fluidity had gone. Interestingly though, I would say that the PS4 version here does have a graphical filter over it which is much more like the look of the original Race Driver Grid, which I described at the time as looking like a real-time version of a late 90s CG movie, the kind of which you would see on the intro to a game before you got to the rather jagged game proper. So being able to play a more dense version of that look is great, and the game does still look good, especially with regard to the solid appearance of far-off scenery that makes everything feel like it's happening in a real place. But on Xbox One X, the same circuits look almost too sharp, with that filter far less evident. I definitely prefer the X version overall, thanks mainly to that silky smooth frame rate even in busy scenes, and I must say super sampling is the best thing to happen to console graphics for years if you ask me, but I do wish there were more options for a more pronounced 4K filter or a fluidity option on the standard PS4. Indeed, the game overall feels so feature-like compared to the original, I've sometimes felt like I'm playing a demo. The career structure is so open-ended and unfocused, it just doesn't feel like a career at all. Sure, some of the events are locked off because you can't afford to buy a car with which to enter them straight away, but otherwise you simply have to complete an event to unlock the next, which is nice in a way, but also hardly an exciting career experience. The game also doesn't address you like you're a character within it anywhere near as much as the original did, and that extends to the races themselves, where the pit radio is too sporadic and absolutely non-specific. Listen, just stay out of their way, let things cool down. Rival drivers aren't called out by name anymore when they crash, and you're not named either, and the teammate instruction system is pretty underplayed, though I must say it does actually work, as you can see here, I told this driver to defend his position, All right, I'll ask them to defend. and he duly held the entire pack back, so I was able to take the win. The mechanical damage is massively understated compared to the huge impact that any knocks had on your handling in the original, and the much-touted choreographer and nemesis mechanisms have had virtually zero impact on the races I've played so far. Three nemesis drivers have crashed into me in the finished game, despite my being shunted off the track by normal drivers quite regularly, both on straights, but also as they dive for the inside at hairpins. I have seen one car roll ahead of me, which sadly I wasn't capturing at the time, and I don't mean the one in that little preset movie, as well as a few cars venturing into the gravel trap and sometimes being stopped in the road after a spin. Not once have I seen a car wipe out in a flurry of smoke and physics objects like they would regularly do in the original. It's like someone took a dial and turned that brash, noisy game down from a block-rocking 10 to a much more socially acceptable 4. Now don't get me wrong, what is here is still very well made and absolutely beautiful, but I can't disguise my disappointment. I truly believed everything would work together the last time I played it. I was excited to see the choreographer system in action and get stuck into that close racing that promised so much, 
but even the difficulty seems out of whack in the finished game. Some races saw me lagging behind, unable to keep up with the pack, while others saw me get way out ahead and stay there unchallenged. Qualifying is of the utmost importance if you play with the AI on hard, because the races are short, and by the time you've navigated the slower cars at the back, the front runners will be long gone. So to the score, well, yes, it is a beautiful game as I keep saying, that's easy to pick up and play, which is great. There are plenty of beautiful cars to drive around some great circuits, the licenses are good, and compared to the current crop of Simcade racers, namely Drive Club, Forza 7, yes it is Simcade, and most certainly the likes of Gravel and V-Rally 4, this at least superficially holds its own. If you're looking for a racing game for the family to enjoy and to show off your expensive new console SKU, then look no further. But if you know what great racing games can be, then this one is going to disappoint you like it's disappointed me. So my rating out of a possible 5 stars with no half stars on this channel is 3 out of 5. What a shame. So thanks very much for watching, I'm sorry this review wasn't as glowing as I hoped it was going to be, but at least all of the main things in the game engine are in place. It doesn't need that much to make it great, so either a patch or just a new sequel will make this realise the potential it so clearly has. Hopefully though we won't be waiting quite so many years for the next Grid game. Well thanks so much for watching, please hit like and subscribe, leave a comment to say what you think of it, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much, cheers.